Let us pray. Most holy God, we come to reflect together upon your word and to be guided by your Holy Spirit, to understand what you give us in this time as we share in praise your word. Lord, help us to move beyond what we might reason to be unto your truth, that we might believe in wisdom and follow together our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Because of when and how we are reading God's word, we have an idealized view of God's people. We know what they're going to go through. We know where this story leads. We've followed the narrative or we've heard it from someone before. As we read the Bible and encounter, especially the more familiar narratives, the, the stories we all like, we can treat them just like that. Narratives, stories with happy endings that we know and we expect. And even when they're going to go through a difficult time, the Bible shows us that God leads his people through. Even in the cataclysmic visions of Revelation or of Christ's revelations shared to us in the Gospels of, of the end times, the coming of the kingdom of God, we can mistake ourselves into a sense of security that we have come to feel we are entitled to have if we keep up the institutions of the Christian religion, but not necessarily the Christian faith. A real and living faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We struggle with the same thing that the people of God have repeatedly struggled with. The people of God had loosely kept the institutions of temple and festival for centuries. From the time of Solomon, even as the kingdom of, of Israel had split. But over time, their ideals were infiltrated. And these foreign ideals were normalized. Idols were worshipped. Rituals were added that appeased surrounding cultures, even distasteful. And those practices which violated the core commandments laid down by Moses on stone tablets. There was no discipline. And there was no clear teaching. And the foundation of faith laid out in law and history became so unclear and muddled and broken by attempts to make the world and the nations and the peoples around them and the cultures around them happy and accommodated and connected with. And the people of God were more engaged in their relationships outside of their faith than being God's joyful people and to be the example that all the nations were meant to follow to draw close to God in love. And for the sake of us all, God needed them to return to being God's people. It is absolutely essential that God's people be God's people. And that calling should not be lost upon us now in this day and age. Because being God's people is no longer left to the Jews, not to the 12 tribes, but is upon all of us in humanity to whom all the gospel of the salvation in Jesus Christ has been preached, witnessed, and revealed. God's people, the Jewish people, the remnant of Israel, returned from exile in Jerusalem to rebuild the walls, to rebuild the infrastructure, to rebuild themselves as a people in the course of their work and trying to reclaim their land as a heritage in a the future. They encounter the word of God again, the Torah as it was. And today's Old Testament reading from Nehemiah 8 takes us to the moment where the word of God is shared anew among a people who had only heard it in remnants, bits and pieces. What was popularly spoken was almost myth and legend after a few generations. The word of God is spoken before all the people, not just some designated representative group, but all men and women and all those with understanding. Yeah, the youth group was there. The world out there has heard the rumors about the Bible. The world out there has heard sayings about the Bible. They may have even opened a Bible. 
But go ahead and take a poll of even your family and your friends. Or even churchgoers. Go ahead and ask the churchgoers. Ask them, do you ever sit down and read or sit and listen to the Bible? Right through. Read a whole book. Read all the prophets together. Read more than just a few passages. Bibles are freely available. You can get them as gifts or downloadable, freely downloadable. Audio versions can be listened to. No charge. It can be shared through, the, through public libraries or church organizations that hand them out in the streets. The Word of God is not something that is hidden in the walls like it was for God's people returning from exile in Babylon. But our society, this world today, has found a way to hide the Word of God in plain sight. The word of God is being hidden by, hidden by it being bombarded by political ideologies, personal agendas, spirituals, spiritualities and philosophies, misusing, misquoting, misappropriating scripture and religious, the religious tradition of the Christian churches. Anytime the Bible is used to give someone the answer they want rather than challenging the answers they have, it's in a state of misuse. We are in danger of trying to make God speak for our will instead of seeking to share God's will through his holy word, through the sharing of the wholeness and the fullness of God's word. Author and columnist Lewis Cassell wrote, any single verse of the Bible taken in isolation may actually be dangerous to your spiritual health. Every part of it must be read in relation to the whole message. Being a people of God's word means more than just throwing out verses to, to reply to situations. But encountering the whole world of God's faith, it means more than taking the reference point Sunday by Sunday, but actually daily and regularly through each day, reading and seeking out the relationship that the context we are in has with the context that we are reading. That the whole of God's word speaks to us at any time, at every time in life. That is the wonder and the joy that brought the crowd in Jerusalem to tears. The realization that they were not meant simply to rebuild the city, to rebuild a sense of nation and cultural identity, but they were given, in the hearing of God's word and fellowship, they were being given God's grace and reinitiating the relationship, the depth, the power, the reality of the relationship of being God's people as God's example of love and care in them, through them, to the whole world. And that's an inheritance that's passed on to us all. Looking at what Paul says to the church in Corinth, both in our reading today, but especially in the context of all the letters sent to the Corinthian church, the church in Jesus Christ is meant to speak and be involved in all aspects of life. We're not just a function of an institution like the pagan religions were, or a single family in its single family viewpoint on the world or even a, a singular individualistic way of doing things. We are not just feet or hands, but the whole body. And everybody's difference and speciality has meaning and purpose that is designed by God, tempered together by God to be. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. And also, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it together. How is that true of your relationship, of our relationship with the context, not just of the church, but the church in the context of its communities to which it serves and which it shares the gospel in Christ. People in the world around us, in our little worlds, in our household bubbles even, do not need to hear Bible quotes thrown as answers to life's questions. But the whole word of God lived and spoken to address everything we want life to be about. It means today, more than ever, we need to be 
We need to welcome people in our ongoing encounter with God's word. To not only have our devotions, but to share our devotional experience. To not only invite them to our worship, but let them encounter the worship of God in their context as they meet us in the everyday, in the every day in which God is meant to be praised. In sharing God's word, it also means we don't simply read scripture and trust to our own understanding. Our understanding is continually renewed and tested in the Holy Spirit and trusted by those whom God has appointed, guided in learning and understanding in order that where there are questions and debate, the difference of opinion and belief, we might be drawn together in our faith and not divided one against another. In our reading from Nehemiah, we encounter also Jeshua and Bani and Sherebiah and Jamin and Akub and Shebethay, Hodijah, Meis, Seah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabeth, Hanan, Paliel, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. There is a whole retinue, a whole collection of those that are explaining the word even as it is spoken, who are making sure that people understand if their minds suddenly go blank, if their faces suddenly show that they don't catch what is being said. And I know sometimes when we're hearing the word of God spoken or preached in the context such as this, that we blankly stare to the front of the room and hope that the next thing the minister says is going to clarify things for us. And when it doesn't, it passes by and it's gone. But a truer reading of God's word means that we're always checking on each other, even as we are listening. And when we see misunderstanding or doubt on one another's faces, we reach out and, and we share that we know that you want an understanding and we share that understanding. And there were those who had understanding, those who were called by God, those who were given training, the people to understand the law, even as the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Reading. Not much point in reading through the Bible if you don't understand it. And if you don't understand it, there's no point sitting there blankly going, I don't understand. But to speak out. To seek out those who have understanding. To, to seek for readings and understanding and not trust to our own understandings alone. And no one's one person's understanding, but the working together in the service of God for the sake of God's love among all of God's people, that all may share in that understanding. So that as we desire the word of God to go out from us, first we are encouraged to experience the word of God among us, in us. And as we come to an understanding in the fellowship that God gives us together, that in a different way than by ourselves, on our own, we can come to God's word. We come to this word as, as homemakers, as farmers, as mechanics, as bookkeepers, as teachers, as government bureaucrats, as cooks, as cleaners, as lawyers, as physicians, as children, as truck drivers, as you name your walk of life. Whether you're serving coffee at the coffee shop or you're working in the, in the dish pan in the back of the kitchen at a restaurant, your experience of the word of God is significant and it speaks to others. And it is meant to speak to others. Or as Paul says to the Corinthian church, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles and gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Not any of us are all these things, but we can be these things in the fellowship that God's Holy Spirit gives us. And by that fellowship, we receive the word of God in a far more wholesome way than our individual devotion or scholarship can ever allow. So listen to your preacher. Listen to your past preachers, especially when they seem to disagree. 
Listen with your whole heart also. But not to your own heart alone, but to the fellowship of love that has built that to be a loving heart. And the trust we are meant to have and represent to the world as the church in Jesus Christ. Finally, that the world that goes the word that goes out from us into the world might truly be more than words from pages. Hear the words that Paul wrote to the Colossians. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. God bless you. And the word of God that goes out from you and is evident in all of who you are.